I did not know that firemen, one of the tools firemen have is one of those big metal fans mm -hmm. with like a fucking Ferrari engine on the back of it. <laughs> Holy hell. They drag this thing up to the steps. Mm -hmm. Not even like inside. They just put it up against like where the door is for the main entrance. And then I hear a grung -dung, grung -dung, and smoke just explodes out of this building. And I was like, oh, wow. And they were, I was like, so we're, we're good then? And the lady's like, yeah, you're fine. It's like, okay, I'm going to go die in my house now. <laughs> I, I'll go back to my plague hole. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking wild. But I'll tell you what, I have never been that meme of the cat that like is all frazzled mm -hmm. that people use for like, I take an hour long nap and I don't know who I am or what, what year it is. This fluffy boy that's just all fucked up. That's a, I literally, I woke up to the alarm and was like, where am I? What year what is, is it? What is happening right now? Just a whole Jumanji. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was wild. I was hoping that story would end with you not realizing your fire detector is also a carbon monoxide detector. Right. That's what I was actually really worried about at first. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't see any smoke. Is this carbon monoxide? What's happening? And then that's when I went outside and saw all the stuff and was like, oh, no, there's a fire. And then it was like, no, there's not actually a fire. There's just like so much smoke. So kind of a fire. So, yeah, it's so kind of a fire. <laughs> there's a fire inside. Where there is smoke. There was the there neighbor's is a fire. <laughs> there was a fire inside. In in the insides. Anyway, hello Hulk. and welcome <laughs> to Blank Bodies, a Vampire the Masquerade V5 tabletop and horror <laughs> podcast. I am your host, Hunter, and I'm joined, as always, by... We are so smooth, my friends. I'm John. Sarah. So we, we, we survived our little COVID bout. Woo! Yeah. Was we... the poutine worth it? I don't know. The plague cannot kill me. I was fine. I oh, just... it very much could kill me. That was... Yeah, yeah. There was a whole day of me just lying on the couch, just debating whether or not I need to check into the hospital. <laughs> it was not a good time. Yeah, uh, COVID, zero out of 10, would not recommend, friends. <laughs> no, get your boosters. Yeah. There's a new one coming out in September. Get it. Be a good friend. Woo! Yeah. I think my moral superiority just kept me safer. Is that it? Yeah. Is that yeah. it? Mm. I was still at Gen Con. I was just fine. I was fine so, at Gen Con. We got fucked up after Gen Con. Yeah, well, we, we did our social... Uh, contact tracing. Contact tracing. And we all figured out that all of our friends that hung out with us didn't get sick except for the, like the five of us. Who went to the restaurant to, this... to get the poutine. Yeah. I'm so glad you guys didn't invite me. Yeah, right? I thought we did, and then you just were busy. No, no one invited oh, me. Yeah. Well, good for you. So, sorry, buddy. I got out. It worked out. Actually, actually, you know what? I'm not sorry. You're welcome. I went and saw Oppenheimer instead. Hell yeah. It's a it's a real three out of five movie. Really? I thought it was at least a 3.5. We're going to get off this editing train because uh, we do have a project to talk about, which yeah. is projects. Yeah, like the bomb. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, bomb. We, oh, my God. Oh my god! You can use the project rule. You can use the project now you rules. Can't cut it out. <laughs> you can use the project rules to reenact the Manhattan Project at your no! table. You literally can, though. You literally can. I feel like everyone would need at least like five dots in craft and academics. Uh, science. Science. Yeah. 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 Uh, with a specialty in uh, like quantum. Well, you could do or other nuclear, stuff. Yeah, they, they had a lot. Yeah, of there's like engineering yeah, and yeah. like thermodynamics. Yeah, 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 yeah. I because I grew up with somebody in my house whose specialty was working on like nuclear equipment. I have a weird hyper fixation on all of this shit, and I know way too fucking much mm. for a not science civilian person. <laughs> But we're going to move the fuck on. So projects, uh, basically, whether you are a player and this is like your driven desire to do a thing, or if the project is the centerpiece of your entire chronicle, projects are a good way to propel the momentum of a fucking story. Yeah, we talked about um, a little bit in our last uh, episode, mm -hmm. but we're actually going to go into detail today. So last time was more like, when is it appropriate to let players do this? But this is how you engage yeah. with them, which may help answer question A better, too. Yeah, so we're going to go over a couple of mechanics that are in the books on how to run projects and how these can be used to help build plot. You don't have to make your storyteller sit there and plan everything in a web thing. Sometimes you can use the mechanics of the game to be like, ah, this is the nexus of a jumping off point for a thing. Yeah. A good chunk of being creative is outsourcing your labor. <laughs> it really is. People are just like, why are you so creative? And I'm like, 
Limitations. Limitations make you creative. Mm -hmm. I know another guy whose entire job is to make like the raw parts mm -hmm. that like industrial artists put their pieces together with. Oh, cool. So he basically just gets parts lists and he's like, all right, I built it. Here you go. <laughs> and really then cool. they make it into the actual art. Yeah, that's really neat. Hell yeah. So content warning, nothing really more than what would come up in a World of Darkness game. So eh, don't worry about it. This is a pretty safe episode, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good except, news. Except for the crack. Uh, I mean, if crack comes up. Crack could be project. Actually. It could be. If you're yeah. going to start a meth lab, that would, that be, would be a, a project. project. You could, If you want to build a drug empire, that project. would be a project. <laughs> yes. But so, you could also build a personal gaming PC that could be a that project. Could, that, mm -hmm. that is a legit project. Yep. Yeah. You're just like, I built a gaming PC for the Harpy. <laughs> you could do it. Uh, but yeah, so sources Sarah are... Sarah Sombra, it was a bitchy move. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the serve, the shade. But yeah, sources are uh, the Oxford Language Dictionary, the VTM Core Book, especially Appendix 2, Projects. Oh, Wow. Wow. Uh, and then the VTM Player's Guide has a little update for projects, which is actually really nice. So, hooray! So, starting off with our nerd bullshit of what we do in this podcast of what is a project. Yeah, what is a project, Sarah? So, project... We already covered that, guys. It's a meth lab. It's a bomb. Yeah. Yes. And a computer. And a computer. Project as a noun is an oh. individual or collaborative enterprise that is carefully planned to achieve a particular aim. So it's it's just a plan. Mm-hmm. It's scheme. It's shenanigans. Can coordinated. I, can mm -hmm. I? What? An individual that is carefully planned to achieve a particular aim. I just took or collaborative enterprise. I just think it's strange that an individual could be carefully planned. Uh, I'm just picking it's a great the definition yeah, to be an it's, asshole. It's just a silly English thing in my brain. Yeah, English grammar is garbage. Yeah. Because this language is trash. Yeah. <laughs> we are a language held together with duct tape and white supremacy. <laughs> Prove me wrong. I really like the first one. Yeah, duct tape's great. But yeah, project as a verb is to estimate or forecast on the basis of present trends or data or to extend outward beyond something else or to protrude protrude <laughs> yeah i just i just i just like the excuse to say protrude it's fun to say anyways mm -hmm. uh there was a little note from the vtm core books because whoever wrote this appendix i don't know who did it but goddamn they had fun mm -hmm. writing this section because it starts off with the word project comes from the latin prosier meaning to throw forward as in to throw dice that's a literal quote from the start of the project section. <laughs> That's so unhandy, but I love that it's there. <laughs> it's so <Yeah>. good. <laughs> I felt so validated because for like, what, almost two years now, I've been doing this literal thing when we talk about shit. I just give a literal definition education, edutainment nugget. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh yeah, I forgot these guys did that too. Hooray. Nice. I'm not alone in the universe. There's at least one other brain cell. <laughs> But anyways, so... Sorry. Oh, you're good. So uh, VTM has actual different types of projects based on how long they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I uh, broke this down into a couple of things to try and make the uh, project mechanics more streamlined. Because uh, unfortunately, when you do read the section, uh, the appendix, it does suffer from the problem where it seems like in the at least the English versions of the book, whoever wrote this out, maybe English wasn't their first language. So there is some grammatical haze, if that makes sense. I believe where, so. Like you read if you read you have to read it a couple of times sometimes when you're a native English person to like get completely what they're trying to say, but you're like what they're saying is accurate and correct, but the phrasing is a bit wonky. Okay. So yeah, no, no harm, no foul, just one of those like as a learning material, sometimes it's a little unintuitive at first, but we got there. Get yourselves um, a textbook editor, guys. Yes. that's. I think that's literally our only ever complaint ever about any World of Darkness <laughs> pro project is like, just get one textbook editor just, just to read through it once. But anywho, um, a short-term project. Um, Appendix 2 defines a short-term project as a project that is less than 10 days long. Should just be uh, contended as an extended test. So that's what I'm counting as a short-term project. Cool. So if it's going to take less than a week and a half, two weeks... Just do an extended test, which there are rules for that on page uh, 293. They gave a couple of different options for running extended tests. Uh, there is the standard one where the ST assigns a large difficulty, usually starting at 10, and players roll several tests to accumulate successes until they meet or beat the target number. Okay. Yeah. So say you're working towards a goal. Mm -hmm. The ST can say like, yeah, like you said, this is 10 mm -hmm. and essentially how long it takes would be determined by how many rolls it takes you to get to that yeah. many successes. Yeah, so, like, 
and it could be a thing also where it's like the coterie is you're all working towards the same goal, but all of you are working on different aspects of it. So each person involved in this extended standard test would be rolling different dice pools, but the successes all go towards that difficulty number. Okay, so you, you could do an even bigger number. Say, yeah, you have like four people working towards a goal. You could do twenty five. Not 10. oh, yeah. The, I think the sample uh, they give in the book has like a base twenty difficulty. Okay, so you can go fucking crazy if you need to um, on the base number because it's just a pooling of successes, and you can kind of decide uh, what pools are most appropriate, and then you know decide what the difficulty of the pool will be, and if people have messy crits or bestial failures how that could dramatically affect the situation. You can have a lot of fun on the fly for this. I've done this with our group several times over things because y'all get squirrely. Uh, <laughs> I want some Us? dogs. No. Squirrely? What? No. I just uh, need a maze to hunt people in. <laughs> <laughs> and I need a shipping yard. Right. Uh, fucking uh, series is one that I I tend to default to the most for extended tests. Uh, tends to work out the best for me. Uh, STs assign a regular difficulty to a number of tasks requiring a set number of wins to achieve the goal. Okay, so that'd be like, okay, you need to get four or higher three times to complete this. Yeah, once you hit the the third or the fifth or whatever the target number is of successes. So it doesn't matter cumulatively how many successes you have you just need to win okay so like that would if you're doing it this way it'd be like okay we're we're playing an extended game mm-hmm. every time you have downtime you're working on this project mm-hmm. roll you got an excess okay so that goes toward oh you didn't get excess so this just doesn't advance you next downtime you can try again yeah i found this works really great for sequential events or timed efforts so like if people are uh, breaking into buildings, uh, if you're doing stealth missions through traffic, stealth missions in general, um, things where you're trying to outmaneuver people in like a, a physical or social space where there's some element of uh, how well this is going to go is going to be dependent on being consistently good at something as opposed to just being really good at something in one big bulk. Mm. I also think this was like a good way to like stealth run some things in games because mm-hmm. I know like you say it's even a social scene where like you have someone that the pl- the coterie is trying to convince help them mm-hmm. that's just say pretty simple for this and but this guy's really important and you're neonates why the fuck is he gonna he's not gonna give you his whole night to just go on and on so it's like all right you guys have five exchanges with this uh high up uh person and if you don't get that mm-hmm. series in, you don't get three at least three successes, they're going to be like, whatever, I don't have time for this right now. Yeah. yeah. But you got two, so maybe you can try again later. Yeah, it's like if you if you want to behind the SD screen, just be like, in the example of dealing with somebody who's like way above your station, just be like, okay, I'm going to give them best two out of three, so let the players role play the scene and then be like, hey, can I get the, can I get a social role and have two or three people do the roles? And they're just like, okay, they got best two out of three. Cool. They have unlocked him enough to be like, hey, here's my business card. We can have a meeting later. Or, you know, if they get a crit success, he'll be like super invested in the moment. Be like, oh, that's actually really cool. Here's the number to my texting goal. (laughs) Right. You can talk to me directly or they can completely botch it and get thrown out of the club. So that's a good like wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Get it in, get it out, get done. Mm -hmm. So hooray. Uh, The next version that the book offers is called Hard. So storytellers assign a large difficulty number. 660... Six. Holy shit, that is a scheme for centuries. Uh, you said large. That's true. But yeah, set a big difficulty number. Could be 10, could be 20. Do whatever you're going to do. Oh. Players roll test for a series of tasks, each with regular difficulty. Only the margins of the successes count towards the large difficulty target number. And ultimate success on the project or on the extended test is met when the players meet or beat the large target number. So you're basically combining okay. the series and the standard. Interesting. Right. <sighs> so for the series, you need to get four successes for it to be a win Mm -hmm. you get six successes so you get those two extra toward your hard goal so basically you would uh, okay so you have a let's say you have a target number of 10 Mm -hmm. so the 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 players will roll a series of tests like a normal test but you'll have a like a a normal difficulty number for those individual rolls so let's say the difficulty for the individual rolls is two they succeed by four the margin is two that two goes to the base 10 yeah. and knocks down to eight yeah. you okay. could almost see it like um uh ethereal type of combat almost where like 
uh, successes over count as damage in mm-hmm. combat. That's kind of how this mechanic works too. It's almost like you're in combat with the concept of a project. Yeah, this is basically like Project AC. Yeah, okay, this is the best cool. way to kind of wrap your brain around it. Thank you for that, Hunter. I was I but when I wrote this down, I was like, how do I best conceptualize this? I don't know. We'll figure I, it out. I, I feel like you're like at war with the concept of chemistry while you're trying to make like said <laughs> uh, meth lab. You're like doing damage to that concept until it's dead. You don't want to do damage to your meth lab though. That's <laughs> No, you that's blow different. Them up. That that's a beast you'll fail. But uh, <laughs> but this is also, I think, a good way. Um, you could secretly use this mechanic, um, in a sneaky way to do like social combat, or that sort of yeah. where you don't you're not actually damaging willpower necessarily. But say you're trying to again persuade someone or get someone on your side or spread information. You could be like, all right, they need to get this many points over the margin for people in the Elysium to be like, oh yeah, I heard this thing and get it to spread. So you guys need to get at least five damage. Essentially, they're rolling yeah. their social skills on this thing like it was damage. I think that yeah, that's a fun way that to do that. That margin gets added to the, to- the big total, which would be the city overall hearing about the problem. Uh, I think this could also be a good st way to uh denote if the party actually gives a fuck about maintaining the masquerade yeah just keeping that as a secret like so what are you guys doing to actually like fix the masquerade okay cool do your roles for that and then you write down the margin of success and you keep that as a total based compared to the damage that has been done as your secret st number Mm. to see if they're actually fixing it and if they don't actually fix it other problems happen (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know you were keeping a tally on us in our old game. Oh, yeah, I was keeping a uh, Grand Theft Auto style, like, police number. And every time you guys, like, caused problems, I would add to that tile, that total. And then when you got to a base 10 or a base 20, I would up uh, the projects that the Sacred Inquisition was running behind the scenes. Thankfully, you guys never got to 20. Because if you got to 20, I was going to start, like, dropping SI agents on you. And I'm glad we didn't get that far. I, well, <laughs> I also specifically hired a guy to keep my name out. He was helping to keep things down. My name, anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. But uh, the book does recommend Gideon that- just uh, runs to the Upper <laughs> Peninsula yeah. and hangs He's out gone. on a lake for yeah, 20 years. He just left, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bye. But yeah, the book recommends that uh, the hard test method is best for like background or what they're terming long-term projects for extended tests, which is annoying. It's a lot of mouth. It's a lot of mouth, but uh, basically this is recommended for things that have little active opposition, but would require time to achieve. Yeah, I think like trying to spread a big rumor. I think Mm -hmm. that would be a good way to do it. Where it's like every time they're giving this fake information out, you just note down how many like, yeah, if Accessory. you're trying to build up the rep of a new club you just put up, um, if you're trying to get street cred on like how much of a badass you are. Or research, if you're yeah. trying to like... Research would be perfect Yeah, for this. because you're learning like base information going through a book, but like you're over the margin is like you actually connecting the dots of what you're reading to each other. You're, you're building together your Pepe Silvia board. You didn't just understand the book you read. You were able to apply that knowledge is what those margin successes would be, I mm-hmm. feel like. Yeah, um, so another method they offer is called cascading, which I fucking love. I've just not had time to, like, implement this in anything yet, which is the SD assigns a regular difficulty to a number of tasks, requiring a set number of wins to achieve the goal. With each success, the player may add the margin of success as bonus die to the next roll. That's kind of cool. That's um, kind of cool. <laughs> it reminds me, it's not exactly the same, but it reminds me of a mechanic in Unknown Armies mm-hmm. that I really like because their project, their goals, like it's all on percentile, mm-hmm. right? And each time you accomplish a goal, you get to roll uh, your dice and then add that to your percentile mm-hmm. until you get to 100. If you hit 100, you complete your goal. At any time you want, you can try to just roll the dice and see if you can just complete your project. Um, mm-hmm. If you fail, you drop down to 50% of what you were at because mm-hmm. you fucked up your stuff. Yeah. Um, but if you succeed, you can then, as long as your project you just completed ties into your next project, mm-hmm. you get a bonus toward your next project because yeah, that, you're just carrying that momentum. Yeah, that's kind of how this is. The book recommends cascading uh, extended tests for... Uh, projects that have high stakes where momentum can be used to like build up the story in a moment or where one failure could ruin the run. Yeah. So they brought up things like doing a seduction over the course of an evening where it's like, yeah, you're doing good. You got all the riz. Everything's going great. And then you just like accidentally bring up their mom and then they're just sad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's things like that. There's like, you know, uh, hacking a computer system. This could be really good for like, you're succeeding, you're succeeding, you're getting bonus die, everything is good. And then if you botch it, you're locked out of the computer. Right. And you can, as a storyteller, calibrate whether the failure 
just resets the bonus die, but they're still able to go, but things are still, like, difficult. Or if it just completely collapses the run. Mm-hmm. That, you... uh, that could also work for, like, tracking someone, where it's like, oh, yeah. I'm trying to trail someone. It's like, you're on them, you're on them. Oh, the trail's gone cold. You fucked up. You went the wrong way, and now there's no way to know where yeah. they are. Or it's like, yeah. you lost them. Roll to see if you're able to find them again, and they can start rebuilding back that momentum. Yeah. Right. So, fun. Uh, the book also brings up the concept of contests. Contest projects. <laughs> Contest extended tests. Uh, each side of the conflict makes one roll per increment of time following the rules for a typical contested roll. The winner is the party with the most successes by the end of the event. Either party could interfere. Oh, sorry. But there's also rules of if either party in a extended contest test. If one party could f- interfere with another party, the ST may have the parties roll against each other directly per increment of time. The winner may add the margin of their success to their success total. The loser adds nothing to their success total that round. So that, that that's also a good way to abstract like games. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to have like your James Bond scene where like the players are playing poker, but like half the people at your table don't actually know how to play poker and or you don't want to get the cards it. out. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well just roll. And you know, you get to still be suave and move your poker chips around in character and, and like have your caddy chat and then be like, Oh, full house or whatever. Yeah. And you can build a pools on like charisma, manipulate intelligence, wits, and then like subterfuge performance. Like, you can get some really interesting pool builds on that. Mm-hmm. And then depending on how the characters are interacting, you can decide if they're actually like interfering with each other or not. And yeah, the increment of time and the poker thing would just be like each round or hand of the poker game. I find find this also works really good for chases. (laughs) This works really good for chases. Yeah. It's a good time. And I I do like at tables sometimes like sitting down and being like, all right, we're actually going to play poker. Like you're actually going to play chess against this Mm -hmm. person. It can be fun, but it can also be a huge distraction where like, the player who's put in that position to do that gets way more invested in the chess game than what's actually happening in your story, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things like that. And so I feel like while that can be fun, it can also be a massive distraction. So for sure. Uh, last little note on the uh, extended test. And some of this does carry over into the actual project mechanics, which is teamwork. Teamwork applies as normal. If not, teamwork may allow the player to ignore or fix a total of failure, which is super handy. So, <coughs> Quick reminder, teamwork is if two or more players effectively work together, you roll the largest pool among those in the help group. So whoever in the party has the best pool to do the goal, they can roll. And they get to add a bonus die per helper that has at least a dot in the skill that is being rolled. And if no skill is involved in the roll, anybody can help. All right. So So if you are trying to build your math lab Mm -hmm. And someone has larceny, Mm -hmm. and someone has engineering, Mm -hmm. and someone has chemistry, and they all work to a to help each other larceny yeah. goes steals and cough steals the cough medicine mm-hmm. engineering helps like build the shit mm-hmm. chemistry actually does the cooking mm-hmm. the other two the the engineer and the thief mm-hmm. would be giving their die to the chemist yeah if the chemist is the one that would have the largest pool overall they would be doing the role okay and then the other two guys are like you may have my axe <laughs> and by axe, you I might mean... have my cough medicine <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, but if, if, say, there was, like, a fifth person or however many noted in the party who didn't mm-hmm. have stats in any of that, they just couldn't help. They couldn't add an extra die. Technically, um, no. Because they don't have that skill. However, say someone was doing a pure feat of strength. Mm-hmm. Say you're trying to pull a piece of rubble off someone who got caught in an accident. Yeah, that could be, like, mm-hmm. a strength and stamina roll. But then everyone, because everyone has, a, yeah. has a dot of every... Yeah. Uh, stat that also because it's not involved skill everyone then could help so like right. that fifth party member could still give you an extra die. yeah because like ability scores are just things that are generically inherent to everybody so everybody has inherently some amount of strength or charisma or some sort of intellect so anybody can help not everybody is skilled in uh cooking sweet sweet drugs oh i was gonna <laughs> say methery methery not everybody is skilled in the art of methery uh, <laughs> Sad for them. We live in the Midwest. We can make these jokes. It's true. Uh, Yeah. So in the terms of projects, if you do not have a skill that could be able to hand over a bottle of uh, cough syrup or hand over your axe to help with the thing, what you can do instead is uh, prevent your homie from failing. So if you're helping instead of adding a bonus die to the roll, if the player fails the roll, you basically keep the project from collapsing. Oh, nice. 
so do you have to decide I'm going to keep this from failing or I'm going to give a die yep. ahead of time? Yep. Okay, so he can be the one who's like, I'm going to make sure this didn't go tits up. Yeah, you're like, I can help. And everyone's like, you don't know anything about lab work. You don't know how a screwdriver works. You're the guy who's standing in the corner with a fire extinguisher. Yeah. They're just like, look, we just just stand here and be pretty. And if anything catches on fire, blast him. And he's <laughs> like, got him. it. I got it. I can do that. Which is important because the total failure is an option on project rolls, which will erase all of the sex, uh, successes that Oof. have been built up, and the player must start over. In certain instances, the storyteller may have to call the extended test due to the inability to even complete the task. Because there might be situations where you're like, okay, the, the, the party is only going to have five increments, and they have to get ten difficulty. And if they fail on increment three and lose, like have a total failure and lose all of their successes, depending on the dice pool, the storyteller might just be like, there's physically no way right. that you could do that. So we're just going to call it. So you can focus your efforts on something. Yeah. It's just like, I don't want to do the miserable thing of making you roll for a thing you just literally can't achieve because mm -hmm. that sucks. Yeah. Unless you're a masochist and that's really what you want to do as a player. Like, sure. Have fun. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you no, but like, I'm not going to make you do that. I want to hear the clickety clack. <laughs> so yeah. That is extended test, what I'm just terming as short-term projects. Technically, things within about a week and a half, two weeks. It, I know, I think we said there was a minimum for a project. It has to be um, 10 days. Is the no. min Isn't that no. what is the quote said? A project no. less than 10 days should just be an extended, extended test. test. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So a project could be something that takes like an hour or two. Could be a few minutes if it's like picking a lock. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but yeah, it's it's recommended for ease of play if it's less than 10 days. So I'm kind of like a uh, week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That makes sense. Extended tests would probably just make this quicker for everybody. Yeah. And then we have long-term projects, which is part of Appendix 2, page 417. The book says 415, but it is 417. Not a huge deal. Just wanted people to know. <clears throat> but to begin, the player must decide what it is they want to achieve. Duh. Uh, next, the storyteller and the player must come up with a mechanical representation of this goal. Typically, this comes in the form of background or trait dots. This can range from things like resources, allies, lore sheets, disciplines, etc. Okay, so they're saying that the outcome of these projects is you gaining dots in certain things? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, the book says that, uh, and I make a note about this later, but we're just, we're editing it live. Um... Storytellers can use projects as a way to basically give characters free dots, quote unquote free dots in things because they're going through the rigmarole of doing the project. Hmm. But some storytellers might be like, yeah, you did the project, but I also need you to back this up with XP just to like secure it on your sheet. Y'all talk about how you want to handle this. That's a you table discussion. No. I also know a lot of uh, people who don't really like the XP spread as it is in V5. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good way to fix that without completely redoing that mechanic is to give players more options to earn mm -hmm. what would essentially be they'd be spending their XP on anyway instead of just giving them the raw points. Yeah. Yes. Whereas like you can then the raw points can maybe go more towards them being a stronger vampire where they're actually like putting in the work to gain allies or mm -hmm. havens or that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I very much like that. I'm in a spot in one of the games I'm in where I am saving up because I really want a discipline and mm -hmm. my character knows that it's possible and would like to be able to do it. But there are things that, like, story-wise would make very much sense for me to be investing in. But it's like, if I invest in the story, then I don't get to invest in the cool thing. So this is a way we can do both. Because the cool thing with doing projects, because they're so integral with the plot and generating plot, this is a way to mechanically reward your players for writing story for you for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Do it. <laughs> You could go so as far as to, like, I would say in-game, I, I don't see it get used a lot, which it's your story. You decide whether or not you find that interesting or not. But a lot of disciplines, like, you need to find, we've talked about before, you need to find specific blood. A lot, sometimes you need to find a teacher. Mm -hmm. You There's a lot of extra steps to learning new disciplines, and especially disciplines that you weren't vampirically born with um that a lot of times i feel like it's like written off but whereas you could just run that as extended project like i'm gonna find someone you who's going to teach me dementation and then run that this, as a project literally the project rules are perfect for that where you're like the project is i need to find somebody to have them teach me whatever disciplines outside of my clan i'm gonna learn vicissitude i'm gonna learn this or mm -hmm. that like 
yeah, this is fucking perfect for that. Yeah. Instead of just being like, oh, I've already got a five dot ally. Cool. Yeah. So it's like, okay, instead of the time sink of, okay, I have to save up all the dots to get a five dot ally or a four dot or three dot or whatever is determined. And then try to, yeah, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Just use a project. Just use a project. Saves a lot of problems. So yeah. So you and storyteller decide what the intended outcome of the project is mechanically. Usually it's some sort of dot spread. Which is also, this is a good way to also, if you want to uh, integrate more lore sheets into your game, past character creation. Projects are a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, these project roles, another option could be to uh, change the resonance of a mortal is also a project, if you want. And the, the dots on your sheet would be a representation of like how much you're shifting them, mm-hmm. either in intensity or into a new type. It makes sense. Yeah. So, because I mean, that is going to go towards other things anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, your whole project could be like, I'm just going to gaslight this person until uh, they're a resonance that I want, because then I get that cool Disgrazia and I get a power, which means I am able to kick this guy's ass. Woo! Been or, wanting to kick his ass anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I am bother. I am shaking this person until they become a protein shake for me. <laughs> uh, or I'm going to give that guy's touchstone a Disgrazia. Yeah, because nice. fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> it's funny that way. Anyhow, but the number of dots of the project that would be added to the player sheet or the adjustment of the resonance in terms of dots is what is called the scope. That is the scope of the project. Next step. Storyteller and player agree on the increment of the project. One increment should roughly be one-tenth of the total time span of the project. So if the project is going to take a year, it gives you roughly a month per increment. Okay, so that's interesting. So it's saying that extended essentially is going to be 10. Yeah, so an actual long-term project... Is 10. 10 units of some sort of time. Okay, so it could be weekly, um, would probably be the earliest. I mean, you could do days if you just like this mechanic and you're, I think with extent, the other ones we've talked about, if you're the kind of party that's like, we're playing every single night is a in-game session, Mm -hmm. this might work for something that's going to take like 10 days because that would be once per game you'd be rolling for this. Whereas like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're playing like, oh, we'll cover like a week and a night of us playing, then maybe, you know. So yet you have to balance your in-game time versus your out-game time too for these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the book does note that these projects could last weeks, months, years, centuries because vampires have that kind of time Mm -hmm. and there are rules describing um if your character would have started this project centuries ago in the past and how to handle adjusting those rules for the project the the point in your story being mid project that's cool i didn't cover that because i figured it was gonna be confusing right now so the rules are in there if you want that i have an idea for an episode that we can maybe bring that into Mm -hmm. because i've thought about um there actually is if you're a patron uh, the day that this comes out, there is a poll up of episode ideas Ooh. that I've been working on. So they might tie into some of those. Yeah. But we'll talk about that more in the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't want to I didn't want to convolute the, the steps too much. So that does exist. Don't at me. All right. So now that you've decided what the scope is and what the time increments are going to be, it is time to roll them bones. Roll the with, bones. With uh, a scene and what is called the launch roll. So, if the start of the project would provide a dramatic moment, these things usually do. Let the players play it out. Yeah. Pe- let people play the game. Let players play the game. So, once that scene has come to its conclusion, uh, the player that is doing the project will do what is called the launch roll. These are typically some sort of skill and background pool. This can include disciplines like for occult and blood sorcery, or if the action is against another vampire. Okay. So if you want to, if you, if the plot demands you need to change up the pool from being a skill and a background, do it if you need to. But more times than not, it's going to be things like finance and resources, or tech and resources, or uh, performance and influence. You know, shit like that. <laughs> Interesting. So if you're basically trying to brainwash someone mm-hmm. over a long <laughs> period of time, that could using be... like a discipline. Uh, technically, yeah, that could also be. Uh... That's how I took an extended action against another vampire, unless you're trying to very slowly beat someone up. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess if you wanted to do that with like dementation, you could do it with dementation. I understand if it or also dominate. It could be like intimidate and dominate. If you're just trying to get someone to be like, no, you listen to me now. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess against another vampire. Now that I'm thinking a little deeper, could be like, um, what we got into in our game a little bit when you're like trying to financially squeeze another mm-hmm. vampire out of your district or 
that's still against another player, but it's not direct. But then that wouldn't use a yeah. discipline. It's just like a lot of disciplines when you use them against mortals are either automatic successes or so powerful that you it's, don't even roll. Yeah, you that kind of just makes the even doing this roll fucking moot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if it's you know. Uh, if you're trying to financially squeeze somebody out of your district and they're immortal, that would be where, like, you can do intimidate and resources if you wanted, uh, or finance and resources. You, you got options. There's options. Right. Have fun with it. Woo. Use your dots. Use your dots as dots. <laughs> it just it just mentioned discipline, so I was trying yeah. to think in my head a specific way that you would do that, and I feel yeah. like... Other than, like, intimidating and, like, gaslighting that one. Yeah, it's... like, the most common one I could see for using this with a discipline is why I brought up, like, occult and blood sorcery. Because mm. you're going to have your fucking little Tremere Bana Hakim nerds. Or even if, maybe even, like, Hakata if they're researching, like, necromantic rituals that would be occult and oblivion. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's probably more times than not what's going to come up. But, you know, if your players get creative, let them do it. Yeah. I'm uh, currently possibly making really bad choices mm-hmm. um which means good story choices Good story yes um anyone in the game with my character alexi go ahead and skip forward a few times real quick just hit that skip 10 just, seconds yeah skip mm-hmm. 10 seconds a couple times mm-hmm. but essentially alexi has a, a painting in his house that he's been working on for like decades and it's mm-hmm. just uh, one of those abstract pieces that's one color and you're just experimenting with texture mm-hmm. um and that's kind of how he's been trying to learn more about oblivion where oh. he'll do all this texture and then use oblivion on it to like move the shadows and whatnot and like communicate with oblivion mm-hmm. and i put those i put those quote unquote because communicate with oblivion but you can because mm-hmm. it might be sentient mm-hmm so that question mark would i be able to use like oblivion and a cult on could that use to or oblivion something like occult, that i might allow craft yeah okay and oblivion because it's like th- that's a choice i'm yeah, not gonna I tell know. you no i'm like he's, uh, sure <laughs> he's doing some bad choices <laughs> but he's desperate giving, <laughs> thanks for giving me all this rope to hang you with yeah that's amazing he's like you know three thousand feet of it <laughs> uh right hell yeah i'm also playing in a game as a Ravnos where ST was kind enough to let me use some of the V20 mm-hmm. abilities. And I could see some of the um, Kai mystery stuff taking time to plan. That would be yeah. another discipline. You would really have to swing it for how Kai mystery works in V5. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like if you're trying to do like things like building a mind palace or something that's gonna yeah, take that would a be longer like a cult and cry mystery yeah honestly yeah or like or... a mind maze or <sighs> i might allow academics yeah. in the kai mystery especially if you have like a especially in like psychology yeah maybe like or if you're trying to like build illusions like you could even do like craft like an artist like you're yeah. spending time like crafting your illusions to look specific ways mm-hmm. yes so <clears throat> And a little note on that, uh, you can also uh, add bonus die to these rolls with the temporary dots of booms, uh, things you get from memoriams can apparently also be added. We'll do a memoriam episode later. It's it's, it's on the list. Uh, so once you've got your, your pool decided with whatever bonus dies, any of that kind of stuff, uh, you're going to roll and the difficulty is the project scope plus two. So the project scope would be so if you're trying to let's just say you have the book is an example of let's say you have two resources okay and you're trying to build up to resources five so that means you need to add three resources so the scope scope is is three three. yes so the difficulty of your launch roll would be five okay so you have to roll five or above to get it off the ground yes interesting okay i like that so uh willpower and blood searches cannot be used on a launch roll makes sense because it's this is a more abstracted roll yeah essentially Uh, other players may help with the launch roll. This is also another option for bonus die on this first roll. Uh, you can either donate coterie dots or you can use teamwork. Interesting. I haven't. <clears throat> I feel like coterie dots are one of the most overlooked things. Oh yeah, in it drives B5. me bonkers. Mm-hmm. I'm just like guys, there's just free. There's free dots and XP just sitting on the table. Fucking fucking use it. I will say I have played in a lot of games where the players are like. I don't know about doing this whole coterie thing, but we'll help each other, which then they don't really come into play. But yeah, but you know, it happens. Uh, So each player must put in at least one dot from their sheet if they're going to be helping, regardless of what the scope is. Participating in a project is a risk and will be explained further as we're going along. So okay. if you're like, hey, I want to help out with a teammate on and give them a bonus die to this role, uh, you can donate 
an influence dot, a resource dot, a dot from one of your malas to be like, you're calling in a favor, contacts. You have to, you have to pony the fuck up in some way if you're going to be actually helping with the project. Okay, that's cool. I like that. Uh, yeah. So on a success, the player must commit a number of dots, which is equal to the project scope plus one as like also them ponying up for this as well. And, uh, the margin of success from the project. Oh God. How did I write this weird? Oh yeah. No, sorry. Hold on. Let me write that down. So on a success roll, on a successful roll, the player must commit a number of dots equal to the project scope plus one minus the margin of successes on the launch roll. So this oh, is the okay. dots that the player will be putting aside. Essentially on. what they're gambling. Yeah. So, um, if, uh, Using, continuing the project that we were describing earlier. So the scope is three. So the difficulty is five. If the roll, let's say it is successful by a margin of two. So the number of dots that the player will have to set aside would be uh, four minus the margin of success of two. So two of your resource dots are going to be temporarily on hold okay. during the duration of the project. Hmm. So these dots that are on hold uh, cannot be used in the game as they're being held up in the project and they're essentially called staked. Nice. Mm -hmm. So these are staked dots. So mm -hmm. it's the closest you kind of almost get to like yeah. uh, stat, stat damage. Like yeah. I know that was kind of, I think that was possible in the original version where you could like oh, you be drained of stats. You can but... take stat damage with projects. Yeah. But. That's uh, what I'm saying. But, but yeah, this, this is, is this is hold. the only way. Yeah. So this is, this is one of the main ways. You can do it and you can, if you have messy crits or bestial failures, that is something as a storyteller can propose as an option for problems, depending on the narrative scene. That's cool. I just haven't had a lot of narrative scenes where that would come up as a viable option, so I haven't offered it as much when we've played, but it is definitely totally an option. I think the biggest way that I would see that working is if it was like a more social or like allies or contacts that, and yeah. it's like... Yeah, you fucked up. That guy doesn't want to talk to you for a while. You're losing like two dots on your contact temporarily because yeah. you pissed off your buddy. Or, you yeah. know, you lose status within the Camarilla or the Anarchs or you lose influence in the music industry or in the universities. And... Yeah. Yeah. It's less like you got less strong because you made a mistake and more like like physically strong and yeah. more like, yeah, you're losing resources or contacts or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, basically, the stake dots is a mechanical way to represent uh, you investing your resources, either money, influence, haven, whatever the fuck you're putting in, into doing the work. Because it costs money to make money. Or even, it, or even it could be something as big as, like, my haven's not huge. This project takes a lot of space. Mm -hmm. I basically can't use my haven as a haven because it's been fully taken over by this project to build whatever the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. I don't have the floor space to do it. So I've lost this while we're working on it. Yeah. Like there's there's a ton of creative options with this. Discuss how y'all want to work this out. It is recommended in the book that the dots being gambled because staked dots are being gambled for a project. It is recommended that these dots that are being gambled be the same as what you would be earning in the goal, but it does not have to. So, mm. like, say you're trying to earn a fourth dot in a discipline, you mm -hmm. would be staking earlier discipline dots? Uh, th that's an example where that doesn't make sense. Okay, but so, like, say you're trying to gain um, resources for. Yeah. You're gambling your money that you have now to make more money. Yeah. That or, makes more sense. Or, you know, um, if it's an influence thing, it's like, if you have influence dots staked, it is you're sticking your neck out. Yeah, if you fuck up, thing. everyone's going to remember. Yeah, that you fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> but if it works out, then everyone's going to be like, hey, you're the guy that didn't fuck up. That's cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, bravo on that. Hell yeah. Good job on you not fucking up. So, yeah, that's... Mm, hopefully the abstractions of this have made sense so far. On a critical success, though, during the project launch, you do not have to commit any dots. You ha that's you have cool. A, you have a clear and free start of your project. You get access to everything. At start of the project, fucking great. Hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, on, a, on a fail... Uh, a reroll can't of the launch roll can be done in the moment, but it adds a plus one to the difficulty. Okay. So you just had a shaky start, and you're just like, okay, cool, gotta gotta roll my shoulders, gotta crack some knucks, and try it again. <laughs> so there's that. If you have a total fail or a critical fail on the launch roll, the player either will gain a new enemy, re-engage an old enemy, some sort of misfortune happens that brings the cost of the project up. Hmm. So so they have to then. Put more dots. To yeah, gamble. so you can, as a storyteller, negotiate where it's like, okay, dude, you can either uh, you can start the project, but uh, you're gonna have to put an extra dot down. You're gonna have to put two different kinds of dots down. You now have a new two dot enemy. Mm -hmm. The the one dot enemy you had is now a two dot enemy or a four dot enemy. Right. Uh, you are now 
disliked in a certain social group because you've stepped on their turf and now they got big feelings about it. Someone found out the project that you're working on and they want to slice of the action and yeah. they won't leave you alone or they don't want you to succeed. Yeah, so there's there's tons of options. This is where the mechanics are literally generating story. Yeah. So, you know, that's fun. I'm all for that. So Yay. with time, there will be gold tests. The project counter begins at 10 because there's 10 increments. Per increment or more, if the player is getting impatient, it literally says that in the book. You can do gold rolls more than just once per increment, yeah. but at least once per increment. Uh, the gold test is rolled. The player pool for the gold test is is usually the same as the launch roll, but it can be changed as plot demands. The staked dots can be used in this pool. This is the only time the staked dots can be used during a project. That makes sense, though. Like, if you, I'm investing three dots of resources into this project, I can't spend that money this is to the... find a new car, but that money is set aside for this project. Yeah. It makes sense. So, yeah, so you get three bonus die for the roll. So, hell yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, there are no willpower rerolls, no blood surges, or crits, technically, on, this, on the gold tests. Okay. Mm. That's what the book says. I kind of don't like it as a storyteller. I'd probably just be like, eh, but I'm letting you guys know what the book says. Right. Uh, the storyteller will rule, roll a pool in opposition of equal value to the player's pool. So whatever pool you have, I also roll the same. Interesting. Uh, the ST's crits do count in this opposition role as representing the house advantage. Damn. Yeah. So that, that's where I, as a storyteller, I'm like, that feels a little ick. So I would definitely run that past my players as like, hey, this is what the book says. Do you want to run this on hard mode or you just want us to have both have access to crits or neither have access to crits? I feel like that alone is a big enough way also to determine how hard the project, like, mm -hmm. are they trying to, are they fighting an uphill battle doing this? Like, are there people actively trying to stop them? Are they trying to like buy land and start working in like a new turf? Mm -hmm. that house advantage belongs to people who've been running this district right but like yeah. if you're the one who's already established here and you're just trying to expand or like push someone else out yeah then you would have the house advantage i feel like you can kind of play with that a little bit yeah that that is a talk to the table situation mm -hmm. it gives me the squick as an st because i generally i'm like i want to make things difficult for my players but i don't want to make it not fun right so yeah eh, that's a talk table thing so the player's wins in this opposition dice pool roll count towards the project counter. So if on this roll you get three successes, you take three away from the ten. So now you have ten or three away from the ten. So you have seven counters left. Okay. So the ST, if they win, it counts as damage against the background dots. Oof. Starting with the staked dots. This damage can be shared among those who helped with their own dots. So if you are helping your homie and you put up a pony up a dot or two, mm -hmm. those go into the pool of staked dots that can be damaged during the test, the goal tests. So you potentially could also lose background dots. Oof. Keep this in mind when you do these things. Right. Are they permanently gone? Technically, yes. Shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, yeah. If you're, uh, if you are, um, you know, trying to buy up land and oh damn that deal did not go how it went and now you're paying fees for it you're spending that money yeah i specifically that alone makes me not really like the st crit thing when yeah. you're gambling with play i mean well, i know they know that but when you're gambling with players dots and experience points and things that could yeah. at the random drop of some dice take away from a player's balance yeah so this is where i say yeah. technically yeah because uh, the damage total will be kept as long as the project's running. So those dots are staked and not usable during the project regardless, so that doesn't yeah. necessarily affect yeah. the parties involved. But if you win at the end, those staked dots become unstaked. And everyone gets them back. Yeah. Okay. It's but just if the project completely falls apart. That's okay. That's when they're gone, gone. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Because like in the during the project, it's like those dots are staked anyway, so for you, if they even go down as damage, it doesn't necessarily change what's going on in the moment anyways so right. really you would even have to really track which stats well i guess you would because you could lose them but mm -hmm. it's really complicated i'm not uh, let's let's go through it yeah, I, I have some we're, mixed... we're almost we're almost done and then there's a streamlined version okay because so. I, have, I have some mixed feelings yeah. on this so uh yeah so if the st wins during the goal test though each of those successes counts as damage towards whatever the staked pool is uh, this yeah, and the damage can be shared with those who donated and helped to add to the stake pool. So, uh, once a player knocks the project counter to zero, 
the project is a success. Yay! Uh, this is where if you're the storyteller that wants people to uh, secure dots with XP, this is where that would happen. Or if you just want to give people dots for free, that's also up to you. This is where that happens, which is cool. And uh, yeah, any any staked dots become unstaked. So hurrah! Quick question. It says starting with staked dots up there. So say I fail miserably enough that I have three dots staked in finances, but mm-hmm. you get six successes over mine. Do you start taking away from influence and other things as that well? That might be a discussion. Because that there is where I was thinking, yeah. like, that's super kind of not <laughs> yeah, cool. That's, yeah, XP's that's... XP's not easy to come by Yeah, that could be <laughs> a negotiation of the dots that you had staked are gone, and then you take, like, temporary damage in other places for an increment of time mm-hmm. would be my negotiation on that. So you right. get the feel of the oof, but you're not, like, completely fucked. Right. But there's also players that are very masochistic. Oh, for sure. And they want you to just take their shit because then they have something to struggle against. So that is a talk at the table. Mm -hmm. Talk, 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 please. Yeah, I feel like this could get really messy with a group that doesn't know each other very well very quickly. But yeah, and the final note is if the staked pool gets knocked down to zero, the project fails. The damage done during the project results in the loss of background dots. And I bolded and yet again, talk to players on how they handle this and what works best for everybody. Because I would definitely be a, hey, I don't want to, because you spent actual XP on your base stake dots. I don't want to take those away from you forever because that's fucked up. So would you be okay with this? these being uh, rema- basically remaining staked for what would be the rest of the term time of your project? Where your, whatever your increment would have been. Mm-hmm. And those are just like staked for however long. Yeah. That would be my compromise where it's like you're, you're feeling the oof and you can, as a player, decide to pick up a new project to get that stuff back or... To sit on it or I, do some other things or you know i feel like options. there could also be a decent ne- negotiation of like you lose the dots they're gone for good mm-hmm. but like you already have those relationships say it's influence you already mm-hmm. kind of have those relationships yeah people are annoyed you can buy back those dots at a third of the price yeah or even you can crunch those dots down into raw xp yeah and just be like all right well you lost those dots here's your xp equivalent how would your character want to move forward from this failure yeah and now you're giving them a chance to like re-scope or respect themselves and have an introspective moment Mm -hmm. i like that better i think saying like all right you lost three dots here's three dots worth of xp and whatever you lost it Mm -hmm. from you can't spend all of it on that stat but I will let you spend some of it, one or two dots of the three. Yeah. But you have to spend the rest on something else. Yeah. Yeah. Even you can buy one point back in resources right now and the other two need to go to something else. Mm-hmm. But what are they doing? I like that. It's more, it's less of a fuck you. You now have three dots less than everyone else in the party because you fucked up and more of a, okay, a character change or growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like I've, we've all done projects and they went horribly awry. And we've had to like spend time, you know, spending some time thinking about yourself and being like, how could I have done this better? What do I need to do? How do I pivot things? Why did I even try this? Yeah. <laughs> it also doesn't. Just sitting in a dark room, just yeah. having a crisis. Yep. Yeah. I've well, been there a few yeah. times. <laughs> but I feel like that would be like a temporary and like maybe once per session you get one of your lost dots back until yeah. they're all back or something. I would say it makes sense because like say something like craft, like an art. I've, as an artist, you've pro- I'm sure we've poured hundreds of hours into something and then in the end it just kind of looks like shit. Yeah. That's discouraging. You don't want to do it again, but you don't forget how to paint forever unless you decide <laughs> to like reteach yourself from the beginning. Yeah. Um, well, that could be represented by you lost resources because that is a, that is a material physical sink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you might have ponied up like a couple of resource dots and a couple of like social status dots or whatever the fuck. And then that could be like, okay, cool. Well, I've lost status with this group. But now I've spent some time working on myself and like going to different art classes or hanging out with different scenes. And now I'm getting status in a different group of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, that's fine. I just think it's something you really got to think out because story wise, it doesn't always make that that much sense, depending on the stats that were put up mm-hmm. as the gamble. Yeah, like I, I first like a, some like craft. I think it makes more sense to be like, you'll temporarily get those back to you're done. Whereas something like status could be like, here's some XP. 
Yeah, like if you, because yeah, there's te- there's technically not rules for putting up a skill, but if you were to gamble that kind of thing, a thing I might suggest as a storyteller is having those dots remain staked for a period of time, and the the narrative thought is that you're basically just going through a funk or like an art block period. Yeah, I was about to say that, or like a little depression episode. So then you have a a couple of sessions where you're mopey, and then maybe people in your coterie are just like, hey, bud. What you doing? Yeah, I was wrong. It is specifically a background or trait dot. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was. Well, I mean, technically, like skills do count as traits, but you know. And I I like that, yeah. especially for like craft or yeah, even academics, like things like that. You write performance. a You write a fucking research paper and get it published, and it everyone and like you fuck up, and everyone's like, "Look at this jackass!" Right. Yeah. And you're just like, "Fuck, man, I'm bu- I, I'm just I'm done with science for a bit. I'm done with science <laughs> yeah. for a bit." Like, <sighs> good luck getting published again. Kind yeah. of right. Thing. Just you accidentally write like a quack paper, and everybody's just like, "Look at this fucking idiot!" Right. Because peer review. Yeah. And, and you get bummed, and so you give up for a while. But then mm-hmm. after a while, you might go, "You know, I really do like. I, I really do like zoology. Maybe yeah. I maybe I will go to the zoo again." Part of <laughs> science is fucking around and finding out. Yeah. And sometimes finding out sucks. <laughs> sometimes it's great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So that is the core project mechanics in Appendix 2 in the core book. There are streamlined project rules in the player's guide. They're on 214. It is way smoother. Yeehaw. So we're going to run through that real quick. So to begin. Begin. To begin. The storyteller and the player agree on a goal. I want to create a indoor <laughs> skate park mm-hmm. on the third floor of this industrial factory. Cool. So next, you will set a milestone. Milestones is basically whatever the fuck the difficulty of the role is going to be. How hard do you think that'll be? Uh, between two and six. You sorry. My, my skate park. How, uh, do you, how hard do you? I'm putting you on the spot, storyteller. Yeah. Uh, let's go with four. Okay, cool. Because uh, you gotta get you gotta get uppies. And I gotta get um, permits. Yeah. And I gotta get all that. Okay. Yeah. Let's call it a four. Next, you agree on attempts. This will be an increment of time, and the amount of increments will be somewhere between one and five. It's gonna take a little while. Yeah. So let's say four. Four okay. and four. Okay. I like it. Uh, now you're going to roll them bones. You set the pools for your roll. You use hunger dice as normal as narratively appropriate. Some some projects, you're just like, it's super abstract and we're not going to fucking fuck with the hunger dice. Other times, it would be neat. Sure, let's throw let's Let's make the roll spicy. Let's yeah. throw in hunger dice. Let's do a spicy roll. Spicy I'm tuna making, roll. I'm making, my, <laughs> I'm making my skate park. And instead of just making like a cool little like, you know, half pipe, mm-hmm. I just make a straight up vert ramp. Yeah. And people don't want to come here because they're scared of the vert ramp now. <laughs> it's you're too powerful, but your beast is hype. So the beast is involved. Hunger dice will be. Uh, the normal, the, the book recommends normal difficulty for hunger should just be two hunger dice. If it's going to be more difficult, make it three hunger dice. If the dice pool is of three dice or less, I don't know how the fuck you had ended up there, but here we are. They recommend only one hunger for that situation. Yeah. So you, you guys decide what, what is most appropriate for the situation. Then you roll them dice. Like normal, you can also use teamwork if you want. So if the homies are able to help, homies can help. Nice. Each successful attempt leads to the overall success. So if you roll them bones and they go above the milestone, it is a success. You roll the next uh, attempt. Cool. So uh, messy crits lead to success, but there will be complications. So you do the thing, but something fucked up happens. I make the vert ramp. You make the vert ramp and you accidentally ate the contractor he was doing a pretty bad job anyway Uh, you can get another contractor it's fine it's just like oh there's project delay because you ate the contractor luckily you're breaking ground and oh no i dug up an artifact and now i have to wait a period of time where archaeologists come and inspect the site now yeah Yeah. something like that uh you you found a corpse in the wall and now you have to call the police and fuck and now they're investigating this warehouse you bought i don't know why the fuck i'm gonna call the police i have a whole bunch of cement right here for this uh the uh, skate park. It, that this this thing happens sometimes where somebody else mm-hmm. in the far past did a crime. Yeah. And now there's a mummy in your wall, and you didn't know it was a secret mummy. <laughs> it was a secret mummy. And then you find it because you you're renovating. You curse. decided <laughs> that you wanted to put new tile in the bathroom, <laughs> and now you have a surprise mummy, oh, a secret man. stash, if you will. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Th- have fun with whatever the complication is. Bestial failures not only lose the role, but present a massive setback on the project. So something big, bad problems happen. You pissed off the prince. You used the lo- wrong lumber company <laughs> to buy the wood for your vert ramps. <laughs> and you didn't play the toll troll. Yeah. Yeah. So problems. What a bummer. Now the prince is bugging the seneschal to uh, negate your permits. Yeah. 
So now the difficulty going on will be five instead of four or, you know, however you want to handle that. I like that way better for most things, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Project wise. Yeah. Um, use the results narratively to set up how the project plays out. That is it. That is the streamlined project rules. I like it. Yeah. That is. Yeah. That's super nice. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. It's like six steps. It's on page like 215. I th nice. I think I like that for most projects and the one we read first for really high stakes stuff mm -hmm. only. Yeah. Like if this is like you working towards your entire goal of the our game in totality mm -hmm. is g completing this project, then maybe, you know, we'll put if, stats if up. If the and... project is like your character's ambition, mm -hmm. I think the more intense project rules are really good for that because then yeah. it puts literal stakes for you as a character. And then if you get other coder members involved, they get involved and now you have the drama of them just being like, where's my money, Frank? Yeah, not only that, but then when you, I like that when you complete your ambition, you're not just like getting one XP. Good job. Move on. Like, yeah, it actually feels like you've completed something. You'll be getting a number of dots in something. Yeah. Even if the ST wants you to buy them out at the end, mm -hmm. you still earn something. You've gained something. It's not just like, all right, you're here. Metaphorically, here's an XP dot. Have fun. There's a fifth of a dot of something. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. think that uh, just as me personally, if I were going to have a player spend experience on the dots that they earn from their project, I would heavily discount it because mm -hmm. they ponied up their dots. They gambled those dots that they could have actually lost. So they should yeah. be getting something for free or fucking cheap. Yeah. So I'm like, if you're doing the OG project rules, I storyteller would be like anybody who wants to go through the gambit of doing the OG project rules. That is just free fucking XP. You just you, you get you get the dots. I'm yeah. not gonna fucking argue with you on that. Yeah. If you want to prefer to do this more streamlined thing, I might be like, okay, cool. If you could back that up with XP. Yeah. Even if it's half, I think yeah. you're putting the time in in game to do it. You you get a discount on some dots you wanted. Yeah. I think that's fine. And then the the other one, like you risked it all for the biscuit, so you get these free XP. Yeah. Instead of losing some, I think that's that's fair yeah i don't i don't like the idea of making players spend full xp for something and making them a dice roll lets them spend their xp or not that feels a little uh to me but them rolling dice to see if they get a discount because then like yeah. oh the project fucks up you've only got half the dots you need you can still just earn the x of the dots and like your character just struggles for double the time yeah. And it ends up working out for you. Right. That's fine too. Yeah. But I think I think that's a good way to do it. It's like offered as like a discount, like, hey, we have this special sale on XP. <laughs> it's it's called a streamline project. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you do real good, if you do good good, you can buy your dots at one XP per dot, but if you fuck it up, it's only two. Or yeah. if it super fucks up, it's like, okay, you still get the discount, but now you have a new enemy. Right. Yeah, I like that. Giving them um a yes but. Flaws. Yes, but. Flaws. I must yes. use what I call them in my system. Flaws. Yeah. Flaws. Yeah, you, you, now you have a dark secret. You can never tell anyone because you've created a new wall mummy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had to put the contractor somewhere. <laughs> you had to put the contractor somewhere. And it just so happened to be in the bathroom walls for some reason. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the baseline for projects in the V5 system. Yay. Yay. Hey. We did it, fam. The project was a project, and we have succeeded. We did. Nice. I gained some XP in something. I hey. wonder what I just got better at. Hmm. Ba -na -na -na. Da -da -da. Yeah, I don't know what I got better at either. I'm going to have to start doing more self-examination. That That's what we said happens when you fail, though. Oh, well, in that case, fuck it. I don't need to think about myself. I had yeah. a thinking. That's, Peace. That, that's, for, that's for queers and communists. I mean, <laughs> ah, shit. Oh, yeah. Hit yeah. me. Hi. Whoops. Hit me. Fuck. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks, Paralyzed, for the Muzak. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That shit rules. It, it'd it, still be bopping. It'd be going like boo 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 boo. Mm hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Um, dun, dun. Oh, tell me he's here. Whatever. He can wait outside. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah but... I guess we technically still exist on Twitter. Yeah. For now. I'm going to dead name Twitter. Fuck him. I, I like <laughs> Exeter. What? Exeter. Exeter, Exeter. Isn't Exeter a... It's a place in England, right? Oh, no, it's no. Exeter. Oh. Exeter? Yeah. That's what I said. You said Exeter. No, no I said, said Exeter. Exeter. Oh, okay, I misheard. I'm so sorry. Regardless, uh, we're not giving you fucking money. What about money. Twixter? That's the worst so far. <laughs> um, 
It sounds like a place where you buy twinks. Twexter? Unfortunately, it's the social media that we have the most ground on. I did get us a Blue Sky, yeah. um, but I don't understand how Blue Sky works, and it seems like no one posts on there, but maybe I'm maybe. wrong. Uh, we'll, f- oh, we'll get figured out. Um, Someone knows Blue Sky. Please help. Please help. We're stupid. <laughs> it, just social media in general, I think. We're uh, not... Most of us aren't great at it. Listen, over back in the Facebook days, I had millions of followers on my meme pages, but now that Facebook's gone, I'm hopeless. <laughs> yeah. So we do have an Instagram at Blank Buddies Pod. We do have a Tumblr at Blank Buddies Podcast. Uh, we have TikTok at Blank Buddies Podcast. Tumblr is Blank Buddies Pod. I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, oh, there you. Yeah, TikTok is Blank Bodies Podcast. I am trying to be better about posting on those things. Fucking Gen Con and then COVID absolutely kicked my ass. But we exist there, and you can talk and say hello and ask questions. Yeah, do it. I dare you. Uh, we also have our community Discord that is for free. Yeah, it's uh, great. It is, a, it is a chill place. That's probably where we're most active. Get in there. And I dare you. get in there. Um, there's also a Patreon if you want to throw us a couple of dollar dues because you think we're cool and neat. And it gives you some uh, Patreon exclusive access in the Discord, which helps us run the community and decide how we're actually running the show. Hunter spoke about the poll yeah, so you for get, some new episodes. Yeah, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to be writing some scripts again. Um, I usually try and set some time aside because I do a lot of editing and stuff for this show and another show, but I try and get some scripts out. I'm going to have some time again, so I'm going to put up another poll. I usually put four on there. And the top two I put uh, time into writing scripts about, and then the others get thrown back into a pile. Um, I'm, you know, what? I'm going to leave it as a surprise what I put on there. I got a new book. I got a couple new books at Gen Con that I think would be cool to talk about that aren't directly vampire related, but I think they could be useful. Um, mm-hmm. There's some general V5 lore that I think would be fun to talk about, kind of like my high-end cobweb episode we did. Yeah. And then I'll probably try and throw just another like horror-adjacent thing, like our snuff series we did on Hunter, there. We are not going over the Illuminatus trilogy. I haven't finished. Uh, I'm on book four <laughs> of the trilogy right now. <laughs> Which is unfortunately an accurate description of the Illuminati trilogy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we uh, the the world of darkness for fifth edition stuff is expanding because you know Werewolf just dropped. Uh, yeah, we're still reading through it. We're, we'll get to it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm planning on doing what we did with Hunter, where before we actually talk about that core book, um, I did get a chance to play a game in Gen Con, but I want to read the book and actually run it. So I can have a feel for how it actually works on both ends of the table before we give our opinions. I'd like oh, to have I... an educated opinion. Unfortunately, oh, we have to take time to do that after the books are released because Renegade just hasn't started giving us books early yet. It's true. Renegade, That's go true. ahead and you know think about that. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> but also, apparently, fuck us for uh, actually taking the time and due diligence to actually do our research on the shit we talk about and not coming in half cocked with a big feeling Look, man. that we're gonna have change in a couple of months because we got the book and realized it wasn't as fucked up as everybody was saying. Oh goddamn! Yeah. Let's, let's uh as a community like try and temper our reactions till we have the actual product and not just like a name of a book they're thinking about mm-hmm. yeah yeah because i mean if we want to do that i'll just start talking about stuff that i don't know anything about i can do that yeah i can start a pathfinder podcast right now i've never right. played it but i can read titles of things and give you an hour's worth of opinion yeah, yeah. for sure we, we can spin yarns uh it's it's almost like making things is hard and you're not always going to hit the ball 100%. Like a and project! Like a project! He Full almo- circle! He got so excited, I just wanted to say that John almost fell out of the chair. <laughs> we don't have good chairs in the recording studio no, right now. They're on the list. It's on the list. It's on the list. We're getting there. We um, need to project John's Dale Gribble not have an ass. Uh, but yeah. Oh, that was Hank Hill without the ass. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's, anyway. Dale Gribble got a donk. He's dead now. Unfortunately, oh. rest in peace. The vo- his voice actor oh. passed last week. No, That's it's because we had the roommate that said he had the the svelte Del Gerbil body. Sorry, I got that crisscross apple sauce. That is um, where the joke was fucked up. But I would like to take a moment um, to thank, especially all of our Patreons. You really helped us out. This is our first episode post Gen Con. Mm-hmm. Um, we used uh, a lot of the money we get from Patreon to put together a zine to hand out there. We did a live show. We were able to go and get badges and spend our weekend there. Take time off work to go. We had our first run of merch shirts we have our first round of merch shirts we are going to do pre-orders i'd like to maybe do them next month so we can get them out in spooky month october 
Um, spooky, spooky. We also were talking about maybe doing a giveaway soon. Um, we haven't figured out how exactly we're doing it. Now that Twitter's done, I'm thinking about maybe making it just for our patrons. But um, either way, I just want to thank you guys. You got us. You helped us get to Gen Con and get all of our stuff in a row and get printed materials and shirts and shit. Yeah. So fucking we, thank you. We met a bunch of really cool people. Um, I don't have all of the details yet, but I'm able to now participate in some cool projects that will hopefully expand the scope of the show and also what I'm doing academically, which Yay. is cool, but also ah, we're adults now. It's weird. People want me to be at places. <laughs> I think I, that's the first time you've ever been able to say that. Oh, I know. Usually I just show up and I'm like, hey guys, what's up? I think I joined a guild. Like a real life one that was kind of cool hell yeah i was a bard you were you were literally a bard um also yeah i want to thank city of glass for letting me just be this fucking unhinged little fucking goblin neonate they really don't know what they're getting into by letting us these fuckers are being like keep being like sarah you should play mage and i'm like no guys i literally limit myself with vampire on purpose because I know if I am a mage player, I am going to fuck up <laughs> everybody's bullshit. Including your own. Yeah, yeah. well, because I'm going to be like, but but I, look, I, through the power of belief, I can manifest in <laughs> Anarchist Enclave. Here's the thing. And I, spite God. <laughs> here's the thing. I don't believe in paradox. Uh, yeah. So. If I don't yes. accept paradox, I won't get it. <laughs> fuck the time snake. <laughs> Anyway, Anyways. getting off track, but really thank you to our patrons. You have done our patrons. You've done a lot for us. We really support all that you've helped us out to do and we're continuing to grow. Um, so I, I'm going to try and get some more polls. We are doing also there's going to be two fucking polls up right now because we're now that Gen Con's over. We've had a little breather. We're not sick anymore. Well, they're not sick anymore. Fuck you. <laughs> um, well, I don't know they, what you're talking about. I'm always I'm, sick. I'm That's always the, sick. Yeah. That's a joke on you. I'm chronically ill. I'm oh. always sick. No, I'm, in, I'm sick because I'm cool. Yeah, but that's true. We're, we're bringing movie nights back in the server, <laughs> so we're going to have a movie night Ow. poll running alongside an episode Can't poll. Wait. Our first ever double poll. Double poll. We're double, double fisting poll. polls. Double penetration mm. poll. Also, uh, it's like skiing. one of the polls might be a little thematic for books that released recently. So Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, Sarah might do a yeah. poll for episodes too. I don't know. We're talking. We want to get you guys more engaged. If you um, fuckers want me to do the milk episode, like you keep threatening me with, pay me. Yeah. Uh, what we haven't decided the price amount. I know we've got we know we've got our <laughs> we thousand. Decided. We've got our. I'll tell you what. How does this sound, you guys? Mm. We have our thousand dollar corn tub tier. Someone buys it. Thousand mm. dollars. We buy the tub. We have the t- corn tub stream. If we can get the show to five hundred dollars a month which will allow us to make this a weekly show. Mm-hmm. If we get to that point, we will do a milk episode. <laughs> there we go. You know what? That's fair. We will do a multiple part milk I episode. Will, I don't know if I could do multiple. We'll find a I, way. Oh, God. I know all kinds of great stuff about milks. <laughs> uh, okay. If you want to be on our interview series, last note, and you want to share your cool projects, whether it is LARP, board game, music, goth-related things, horror-related things, sci-fi, we want to hear about it because we do cool stuff and we want to talk about your cool stuff. It's the truth. Uh, hit us up at blankbodies at Gmail and give us your deets. Also, yeah. if you're a real vampire, you just go ahead. Yeah, and we're getting there. Email, let me know. I might find one in Texas. It's it's a long story. I don't know. I, I... I might have to go to Texas. <laughs> It's okay. a long story. Well, I think we need to wrap it up because the neighbor's mariachi band sounds like they're warming up. I don't know I if you can hear it through the wall. I am fucking stoked. Dude, I love mariachi. I, I live in a multi, multi-people's multi neighborhood, which I fucking love. And the best thing is I do get mariachi music as well, but it's not like a live band. It's somebody's dad who's got this banging playlist where it's like mariachi and then a couple other like uh, Latin Mexican music where you just like, you know, if there are a few more synths in here, this would just be a goth banger, but it's got a lot of trumpets. So it sounds a little bit more peppy, but then they also mix in things like fucking uh, like Stevie Nicks. Yes. And it's such a vibe. I love it. There is an <laughs> album that I feel like would be perfect for you. And it's a mariachi cover album of Smith songs. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I've been delving it's into Smith? dude. Fucking uh, Spanish Smith. language goth music hit so hard. It's so good. Anyways, we gotta go. Goodbye. Yep. See ya. Goodbye. I really, I really miss living me- uh, next to that Mexican family that had the parties that would last longer than our oh, dude. post-show parties. Dude, yeah. Anyway. Mexican party slap. I love all of you. Hell yeah. You're wonderful humans.